Uh, so the question is, how can I remember everything that I learn in jiu-jitsu class? Um, setting a real low bar for themselves here. Uh, so first thing I would say is you don't have to obviously remember everything that happens in jiu-jitsu class, um, and that might be a little bit uh, more breadth and scope than you need at the moment. For the most part, uh, depth of information is going to be more useful than broader scope. Um, but I do understand the um, the so, the frustrating nature of a lot of class, which can be, I learned the steps uh, via demonstration and then imitation. I practiced them some number of times. Um, if it's if it's new, if the movement is new for you and you are a beginner, not very likely you got them to work in sparring. Maybe in a positional sparring situation you did, um, and then. Again, depending on the structure of your classes and uh, your uh, coach or instructor, um, do they revisit, do they review, um, do they circle back onto the techniques? Um, so there is a lot of information that's coming uh, towards you at the beginning of jiu-jitsu and not a lot of it is necessarily being retained. Um, so how can you remember uh, these techniques? Well, first thing I would, I would recommend is I'll, I would suggest you, you write things down, but what I was going to say a moment ago was um, what are some things that are relatively easy for you to remember um, and do you have some method you use to do that? Uh, for most people, taking notes in one way or another on their phone, on a notebook or whatever, is the first place to dump the information from your mind into some external source so that you can sort of forget about it in your working memory and return to it uh, on the external form. So I recommend that people bring a notebook to class and when they learn a technique to write it down. Now here's the thing is you don't have to write it down in terms of did you get every step, every detail right? That's going to be a kind of a tall order. What I would instead do is say what was the start of the thing you're writing down? So let's say you learned um, how to open the closed guard and pass. That was the lesson you had today. The first thing you do is you write down, opened the closed guard and did a guard pass, ended inside control. So now you have just the general uh, start to finish of what you're trying to keep in mind. Then I would write down all of the major details that just stick out to you, not in order or anything, but just write down what sticks out to you because the reason it sticks out to you is because it's, it's, seemingly unfamiliar or it's you saw it and you're like I didn't I don't know why they did that seems a bit uh, uh, counterintuitive to me but I'm trusting that it's correct so you write down those things that seem less obvious to you so you have a record of them and then after that I would try to write down the steps as you understand them because you, you got to think about it from from the perspective of what do you get from the act of writing it down well, you're just making your mind circle over that information one more time. So you're trying to capture the big chunks, the most useful things that you can, first things first. Then you think of it from the, when I go, if I go review these notes, what am I gonna see six months from now when I don't really remember the context of this and how am I gonna get some use from that? Well, if you wrote down that you learned to open the closed guard and pass and end it inside control, that immediately allows you to place yourself in, this, in a similar mindset as when you took these notes. So then the details right underneath it, the big ones that were counterintuitive, are gonna make a little more sense to you. If it was grab the collars and, and twist and turn your biceps out, that by itself might not mean a lot, but in terms of opening the closed guard, you might go, oh, that's right, because if I don't do that, then they pull on me and I fall forward and that's where all their submissions come from. Okay, cool, I got that down. And you see some big, sort of counterintuitive or just the major details that stand out to you. And underneath that, you'll see that you wrote down as much of the step-by-step -step information as you could remember. And as you read through that part, uh, likely it will sort of seem obvious to you because you've been doing those things ever since that class. You've been using these techniques or some form of them. And what you'll notice in that last bit where you wrote down the actual steps is a lot of them will seem very obvious, like, well, yeah, stand up and open their guard. If you can't just stay in someone's closed guard, duh. And then you'll also be able to fill in gaps that you didn't even recognize as gaps 
the first time you went through. And that's really an important part of note taking and, and noticing your own progress in jujitsu is to realize that a lot of what happens in jujitsu, a lot of the learning is learning how to act in between the places your opponent acts. So your opponent might be doing this thing, then doing the next thing, then doing the next thing. And what you would want to be doing or what a more experienced person would be doing to beat them is not they do this thing and then the other person waits and does their thing and this back. No, it's not, it's not this turn-based game. It's the, my opponent starts to do one thing and I interrupt them before they resolve whatever it is they're doing. And now they're trying to figure out what I'm doing and responding to me. And before they even notice, I'm on to the next step. So by looking at your notes and looking at the steps you wrote down and noticing where you can see gaps in your own understanding, you become more confident in your ability to problem solve and your ability to solve the problems of jujitsu as they occur. And that's a really important step to take as early as possible in jujitsu because you cannot uh, doubt that you will get this thing to work and then somehow make that thing also work. The doubt and hesitation that precedes your action will undo your whole action. So we want to have methods in place that allow us to recognize the progress we've, progress we've made in this regard by looking at kind of like a past version of ourselves as indicated in the notes. Um, and that would be generally how I would try and remember the most useful information in class. The start to finish sentence, we learn to open the close guard and pass, we ended in side control. The big chunks or, or pieces of information that seem sort of weird or counterintuitive, uh, grab, turn the biceps out, step back when you stand up, don't step forward, et cetera, et cetera. And then lastly, the actual step-by-step -step, um, in as much detail as you can, that last section being used uh, for you to look back on later and go, wow, all this stuff I wrote down as really important steps are obvious to me now. And I also recognize that there's a bunch of little details that I didn't even know about that I can use if somebody's trying to open my guard, I can use to attack them. So that's what I would recommend to do to remember the most from each jujitsu class. If you want more videos, please click below to subscribe. If you want to dive in deeper, you can click here to get a free video seminar I did of one of my favorite sequences uh, from standing to submission. And if you have any questions or anything you want to see, please leave it in the comments below.